I'm Terry Bush, and I was the first director of the McLean County Arts Center. Hired in September of 77, I believe it was, and stayed until January of 81, which put me right in the middle of the arts center's move from lease space at 210 East Washington Street to the current building here on East Street. When I was hired, the Art Association had just kind of made its move from the Russell Gallery of the Withers Library. The ceiling there had collapsed and the Art Association had to make a decision about whether to simply move, remain a private organization, disband, whatever. They decided to make the leap and become a public arts agency and to establish the Arts Center. So they leased the second floor of the old Bloomington Club building, which stood at 210 East Washington Street. Opened up sales and rental gallery, it used bookstore, uh, exhibition gallery, and continued a visual arts education program that had actually started during the bicentennial. Um, those, the education program was really being run independent but eventually became an integral part of the, uh, of the Arts Center. In 1979, um, the lease on that space was up and we were notified that we had to vacate. Uh, the building was slated for demolition. And um, so again, the Art Association had to make a decision about its future direction. And Nanky Merwin was the president of the association at the time and the chief magician behind all that followed, really, um, in terms of this building. The association committed to finding permanent space. They were done leasing space. They wanted to have their own home. And um, Nanky knew of this church coming available and um, you know it you're supposed to do a full-blown feasibility study before you buy a building and we just didn't have time for that my estimate was we could stay in operation for about six weeks without generating income from classes and sales and rentals and so forth and after that it, it was going to get really dicey so we didn't have a whole lot of time to raise money for a capital campaign. Our feasibility study consisted of Nanky and I meeting here and going through the building. And we sat down in the, in the church. It was still in use as a Pentecostal congregation. And we sat down in the church and we looked at each other after looking the building over a couple of times. And um, she said, what do you think? And I said, I think it'll work. And she said, so do I. That was our feasibility study. She went to work raising money with uh, great success, led a fundraising effort that was, was quite remarkable. Um, the Merwin family at that time owned the Daily Pantograph. They are direct descendants of Jesse Fell. They are cousins of the Stevenson family. Um, deep roots in McLean County and um, they did an excellent job of involving all of the right people really in getting the art center on its feet in its own home. Um, well I think the McLean County Art Center is fortunate uh, to be located not only in downtown Bloomington, uh, the cultural hub of the Twin Cities, uh, but also in this beautiful building. Uh, connected to Arthur L. Pillsbury, one of the more prominent architects in Bloomington Normal's history, uh, dedicated in April or the spring of 1909. It's really uh, one of the few examples of mission revival, if you will, architectural style in the building. And that was a style popular in the late 19th and into the early 20th century and somewhat predates the Spanish a colonial revival, Spanish architectural revival that really takes off in the Twin Cities in the 1920s. So here is a beautiful early example of mission revival um, and not only that but done by uh, Arthur L. Pillsbury. Probably 
the most well-known uh, architect associated with, with Bloomington Normal. Research done at the McLean County Museum of History, uh, we have identified around 435 residences uh, connected to Arthur L. Pillsbury. He was somewhat kind of a society architect. He had connections to Bloomington Country Club. Uh, as the city of Bloomington was growing to the east side, uh, a lot of homes, for example, on East Washington Street are um, Arthur Pillsbury's. Uh, he worked well in kind of the old Americanisms, kind of the vernacular, somewhat style, a lot of uh, uh, well-to-do people were interested in, such as Georgian or federal style. But he also worked well um, uh, in more modern styles of the early 20th century, such as arts and crafts. And he was known to really combine different styles. So he had really kind of an eclectic uh, uh, overall style, personal style. So he worked well in, in, in Gothic architecture, in even Rococo or Baroque. Um, and we see those examples throughout uh, Bloomington Normal. So not only uh, 435 some residences, we've identified probably more than 70 commercial buildings tied to Arthur Pillsbury. Uh, the downtown Bloomington Fire, the Great Bloomington Fire of June 19th, 1900, decimates four and a half to five city blocks of the central core of downtown Bloomington. And Pillsbury is one of several architects that plays a major role, a fundamental role in reshaping the built environment of downtown Bloomington. And there are more than a dozen buildings associated with them post-fire. And we know some of those, uh, such as the McGregor Building, which is now the, the, the Gregor Art Gallery Building at 311 uh, North Main, kind of in a, uh, um, I guess, a neoclassical style, a three-story commercial building, which he was known for. Um, uh, not only, uh, so we have uh, residences, commercial buildings, 17 banks associated with Arthur Pillsbury, but for our interest here is the 30 plus churches uh, he was associated with. And this is certainly one of the finer ones. And many Pillsbury churches no longer survive. This building dates to 1909, as I've mentioned. Uh, after that, we have uh, First Christian or the Disciples of Christ Church in Normal is opened in 1912. That's in Arthur Pillsbury. And then a year later, uh, uh, First Presbyterian Church in Normal is built. Both of those structures are gone. There is a surviving Pillsbury Church on the old northwest end of Normal. That would be the United Brethren Church, now owned by Eastview. So, but this is one surviving example of a Pillsbury Church and done in a mission revival style. So we have kind of the hallmarks of mission revival here in this lovely, uh, what is now the McLean County Arts Center building. So we have decorative parapets. We have uh, rounded or arched doorways and windows. We have that kind of beautiful square tower, Mission Revival, kind of a hallmark uh, with kind of an arcaded uh, upper story. Um, we have the barrel tiled, slightly sl uh, low slung roof. So uh, this is a very distinctive building. And I think the McLean County Arts Center has been a central part of the downtown scene, uh, going all the way back to its long association with Withers Library. In fact, I think of the McLean County Arts Center, its true birth really being in the early 1920s with the Bloomington Art Association. Um, and the Art Association had a gallery in the old Withers Public Library in downtown Bloomington beginning in the early 1920s until Withers Library is raised in the mid-1970s. And then, of course, the Art Center moves into the old Congregational Church here uh, right next to the Bloomington Center for Performing Arts. So as downtown Bloomington begins to remake itself and become a vibrant cultural hub for the Twin Cities, we look at things like the Grossinger uh, Arena. We look at the McLean County Museum of History. We look at the Bloomington Center for Performing Arts. And we can't forget the McLean County Arts Center. So these are the cultural institutions that are really going to lead, I think, the rebirth uh, of, of downtown Bloomington that will really play a crucial role in that graduate of LSU uh, School of Environmental Design and I remember one of the professors saying that uh, do yourself a favor he said your first five years ten years um, if you want to live in Louisiana 
go practice those first, that first decade elsewhere because you'll be able to live in Louisiana more comfortably if you do. I said all of that to say this, I have a very long history with this building. And it's more from the uh, social, I came up here uh, working with the church at the time that was occupying this building when it was a church. They had bought the old Christian Science Church, so they said, let's re-up this building into, a, into an office building. And they did re-up it, and at that time, it combined the, this residential piece with the main building. Would I do that today? Absolutely not. Am I embarrassed about a lot of it? Yes, I am. Uh, thankfully, I've had another 30 years. I haven't returned to Louisiana, but it might have been really good advice from that professor a long time ago to do your mistakes elsewhere. Having said all of that, uh, it has worked. I'm not sure about the visual continuity from a design. Nevertheless, uh, what I do remember is that the transition, how important that piece was. Uh, the church was vacating. They wanted to sell the building and it was Nanky Merwin at the time that approached, and I'm not sure, I think of course it was Dave, but my understanding, and I, I stand to be corrected, my understanding was that Dave had lunch with several people that could make this happen and simply said, we would like to see this happen and it happened. So it was private individuals coming together to further the arts. And I think it was one of the high points whenever, uh, whenever the arts uh, purchased the building. Uh, all of the glass were stained glass windows that were here uh, were not appropriate for an art gallery. Those were all uh, returned back, I, I think sold maybe, but for a very low amount, to the original company that still is in existence today in St. Louis that had put the glass in 100 years ago. So uh, that piece about the building, I think, you know, whenever I, as an architect, talk about Pillsbury as an architect, he did fantastic work. Uh, died uh, whenever the Insenberger building was being redeveloped uh, in an accident, car accident, on his way back from a U, uh, U of I football game. Um, but the building, I think, you know, mission style uh, has had a presence for a great long time. When this building was built, I think New Mexico was not a state yet. And so, you know, uh, if we just allow the buildings uh, to tell their story, there are great stories to be, to be told. And uh, we often say that, I've been told, uh, as we've worked downtown, that uh, one gentleman said, well, you know what? One architect per building is sufficient. He said, even if it's 100 years later, I'm not certain that they need another architect to do redesign of, of, of buildings. I concur in many ways because I think that as we see new construction go up, so often we are not taking the care today uh, to be quite as, as design-oriented as they were 100 years ago. And so even though I uh, probably rework something that I wouldn't do today, know that Pillsbury's work still shines bright because you can tell where Pillsbury stopped and I started.